Hey guys, Ed here. So I was doing a little bit of winter cleaning on my removable hard drive. It's many terabytes wide and uh, I like to keep it tidy. You know, it gets kind of messy in there from time to time. And I came across some pictures from back in the day. I came across my old gaming battle station from high school. So for me, that was 2007. I'm an 80s baby, 88. So high school for me was 2004 to 2007. And uh, I, like many people who play World of Warcraft, was ch was chained to my desk during uh, <laughs> Burning Crusade. So I wanted to share my pictures. Um, I feel confident in doing so because of the positive reception other WoW players have gotten sharing their own, most notably Asmongold. Seeing that positive like to dislike ratio has given me the confidence to share my own mess. My, as I called it in the folder, the epic mess. So let's go through these. Okay, I'm gonna give you an in-depth analysis of <laughs> where my head is at. All right, first picture. Their determination has paid off, and what was once lost has now been found, the dining room table. Being able to even see the table when we first uncovered it was just, it sounds silly, but it was monumental. We almost had to learn how to use that table all over again. Got to talk about the hardware first. This was a Logitech keyboard. Um, I loved the hell out of it because it had that flip up LCD display. And for some games, they built in firmware to interact directly with the game. Sadly, nothing for World of Warcraft to my knowledge, but I was able to see my Windows Media Player and Winamp uh, now playing from right there. And I was able to like fast forward, <laughs> there's a fast forward button and play and skip song all there. And uh, there's all sorts of other goodies there. I loved this keyboard so bad. Uh, there's, oh, the numpad is nice as well. Um, there's also programmable macros over here. All these extra buttons here, like to like use Windows macro utilities, whatever. Logitech mouse, that was my first gaming mouse, or the closest thing I guess you could call a gaming mouse at the time. Um, it had a little slot on the on the bottom of the mouse where you could it it was like a little cartridge you inserted it was already it, it came empty by default but it it came with a little pack of weights like we're talking like very light weights and you could load up that cartridge with additional um metal little circle tabs in it so you could add a little bit more heft to that mouse <laughs> just to help your uh you know precision so that mouse pad right there that blue is a frosted glass um ice mat yeah ice mat they made these awesome um mouse pads softs and frosted glass and i loved it you know i just felt cons it brought consistency no matter where i uh, would go and land parties or whatever friend's house because we did that back in the day um, so yeah, still rocking the speakers like most people before gaming headsets became a really big thing. Um, BenQ monitor. I don't think I capture my PC, my rig in any of these, but I paid for all this. I was a self-made gamer, like parents never had money, you know, like that to give me for stuff. So I worked a part-time job as a telemarketer. And I was making like a little bit above minimum wage. Uh, I was thinking like $10 an hour, which is really good for 2000 and for the 2000s. And um, I made commission too, selling video professor. So I get my hourly wage and then I would get like three bucks or so for every successful order I, I uh, converted. You know, because these people would just get like transferred to me after some other infomercial, some Billy May stuff, 
and then I would just get it. It'd be like a cold. It's a, it was like the equivalent of like a cold call or whatever. <laughs> like, wait, what? I'm still on the line. And then I try to, you know, swindle them into buying like software to learn how to use your PC. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I was really proud of all this stuff. Um, anyways, let's get to the mess. You know, uh, that, that's why we're here. The mess. So young teen playing games coffee isn't on the table you know like that that shit stunts your growth so i am drinking so duh i don't care what it is so got the coke got the pepsi got the do you know those those are the staples do more than anything else for me at least Uh, mountain dew code red first then green dew original dew then coke coke i don't even know why i had the pepsi i must have been desperate because coke to me always had that nice little i can't explain it the aftertaste on coke was so much more enjoyable than pepsi pepsi was like i could after having a good coke pepsi just tasted like brown sugar water to me you know like i could have just made that myself you know water in the kitchen sink a little sugar in there brown food coloring and it would have been the same to me i think this is a um lemonade uh, can of a um, country time lemonade so yeah uh, there's that oh and how convenient uh, this is actually these two boxes right here are video professor <laughs> lessons that I was able to take home uh, because they're just passing this shit out them shits out for uh, <laughs> yeah I know just you know so I could understand the product better and sell it at my job um, boxed World of Warcraft Burning Crusade I remember going to um, GameStop inside the local mall, Erie, uh, Erie Mall, back in Erie, Erie, Pennsylvania, where I'm from, and waiting in the line for this shit with all the other nerds and my two uh, closest friends at the time, and it was amazing. Napkin roll, gotta gotta stay uh, fresh. You know, uh, I, you know, no one played on webcam back then. Um, Justin TV, Twitch's predecessor, wasn't even really a thing back then either. Um, so yeah, I just didn't want to, there, there would come a time where I'd make a spill or I, my hands would get super greasy from the pizza. So I had to, you know, pump the big dick deeps and Karazhan. So <laughs> yeah, I can't have greasy hands and do that. Um, because yeah, I was stuck in a permanent Karazhan guild. Gruel was like this lofty goal that we never got around to because I, join i was just happy to be in a guild and i didn't know better existed so i was a kerosene hero <laughs> um nuggets i mean fresh crispy nuggets right from mcdonald's oh my god yeah so uh, apparently i just finished you know taking down probably, probably about five nuggets each did they come like that Five piece McNuggets, yeah, I think two times five. So I had 10 nuggets whenever this uh, was taken. And I'll show you the modified on the timestamps um, and the properties. So you can uh, take a look exactly when these were, take- these were taken. So yeah, usually I was a can boy. I just loved the asthma, the, the, the experience of cracking open that cold, frosty, you know, soda or as we called it in uh, Erie Pop. But yeah, but sometimes I would get desperate or whatever, you know, if there was like a bottle drink. uh, Usually it wasn't that savage. I usually wouldn't drink out of the two liter, but but I have been known to. I usually would go with a cup, you know, uh, before I drink it out of the bottle. The thing I hate about the bottles was that it just felt so scuffed after you open it, like, and after a day or two goes by, that air really starts to take a toll on the freshness of the uh of the beverage so yeah looks i'm on my rogue uh from right here i can see sinister strike gouge um adrenaline rush sprint throw i think that's blind right there that's the stealth button and i see my menu open i'm looks like i'm dual wielding swords i was a i was really big into swords for raiding um combat swords but yeah, Hemo AR prep back in the day, that was my shit. That was my favorite spec of all time on Rogue. If you harp, if you know what that is, 
those out there watching that who remember that build that was such a nice build i absolutely loved it so yeah i had that pull out desk you know a lot of you don't really see desks with this feature too much anymore but i always hated the pull out tray desk i just felt like i wanted to be able to see my keys just something about it i'm always like a hands on top of the desk kind of person uh, it's just how i roll so this chair, I think we'll, we'll see more of this in the next few pictures. Um, I also paid for this chair from like Office Max or Office Depot, one of those places. And I had to assemble it and I was just like, so nice. Because before this, I was using this hand-me-down chair. My parents bought office chair from like 1970 or something. And it creaked every time I leaned back. And it was just, it hurt my ass after, you know, a few hours. And <laughs> as you can see here, I don't leave my desk much when I start gaming. So yeah, I think the analysis is complete here on pick number one. Um, oh yeah, we gotta talk about the room. So yeah, the whole room is covered in this, you know, like wallpaper from like the 70, 60s, 70s or whatever, just flower pattern all over the place. My room, I had the whole attic to myself. It, it's the second floor. It was kind of like this attic where the ceiling is like kind of, it's like, um, what's the shape? Trapezoid. Yeah, it's kind of like a trapezoid. It was like the ceiling would go like this and then it flattens out up here. So yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, pick number two. Um, there's the chair I was just talking about. <laughs> Oh, so comfortable. I can still remember how good it felt. I, I like my gaming chair I have right now, but this will always be near and dear to me. I felt so fancy. It was wood and leather, little metal studs lining it up and down. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we only saw this right here. And uh, now we get the full view. <laughs> More of the same, really. I... As you can see, the bottles that are fuller are usually the diet um, sodas. God, this, the brown Pepsi. Oh my God, what was that? That was the no sodium or it was either, it was like sugar-free or caffeine-free. It was a modification of diet Pepsi because regular diet Pepsi, I think was silver at the time. Um, when it came to the bottles, like the cans were always like this lighter shade of blue. So you see it there. The reason there's so much diet on this desk is because my parents would always get diet for themselves. If the full flavored regular sodas were around, it was because it was a special request um, for me or I actually went shopping and insured. We had those because I just, I abhor diet. If you're gonna drink soda, which is already unhealthy, at least get the taste out of it you know it's like yeah to me it was like trying to eat a tofu cheeseburger so i'm like no if you're gonna eat unhealthy do it right you know, so um pizza pizza was my staple like i just love pizza it's like it comes to you hot and there's a lot of it it feels like it's more of a meal than like you know cheeseburger or something like that chicken sandwich from like McDonald's or whatever and the most affordable option for pizza using my own money now we're considering is um, Little Caesars so five bucks for that hot and ready even back then in 2007 it was like um, five dollars you know and that was a lot of pizza <laughs> looking back now it probably was not too far removed from cardboard with sauce and cheese on it but it was good and it, it, it was good enough for me you know <laughs> i'm not trying to you know like eat a scrumptious healthy nutritious meal i'm just trying to get something in my stomach so i can keep farming rep and ganking people on the isle of qual Danas. so yeah uh see some bowls because every once in a while i'll end the plates because Usually how that would go is either I have some sort of fast food lined up for after school when I get home and, you know, I'm about to play or um, my parents 
one of my parents would go out and get the food, you know, like fast food or whatever because they didn't want to cook, or um, evidenced by the actual like kitchenware, they would cook, like, yeah, they would cook, and then <laughs> at this point, you know, in my childhood, um, we stopped, we were long past eating together as a family. So they would walk upstairs, set it on top of, at the top of my stairs, there was like this like banister. It was like a little ledge, like a little catwalk, you know, like, th like this wide. And my cat would actually walk on it or whatever, just to give you an idea. I was able to walk up and down at its length. Um, they would come up the stairs, set the plate of like freshly cooked food right there. <laughs> It was like the equivalent of a prison inmate getting slid like a plate of food underneath their door. And uh, that, that would get up, go over, bring it over to the desk, eat it right there. Actually, that's what the tray was good for right here. Um, I would slide it out to set the plate of food there so I could like shovel bites of it into my mouth or scoops of it if it was soup or something or, you know, or whatever uh, in between whatever I'm doing. So, yeah. Um, now, I can't really say with certainty at this point how long it took to get to this mess right here, but I think the average would be like two weeks and, and then it would get this bad. Like this was, yeah, probably about two weeks worth of stuff. Um, <laughs> really what would trigger me cleaning it up more than anything would be like my parents complaining or my sister complaining about how you know there's no silverware left there's no plates or cups <laughs> left so then like on a Saturday or whatever Saturday morning I would you know take all of these plates and cups down to the kitchen <laughs> so, so someone else in my family not me, because, you know, that's how I rolled. We could, you know, actually, like, wash these, you know, <laughs> get them back into circulation. Because they, they would stay locked up here for, like, two weeks, you know. And yeah, it was bad. Um, I usually use this drawer for, like, game manuals and school stuff that I didn't want to look at. You know, probably report cards of me, like, getting C's and D's and shit, because I missed a ton of school you know like just over a while you know I was just kind of coasting through high school I was I was good at school I just kind of coasting through it we had a days and B days um, some of you you know may can really maybe can relate to this our we had like you know our regular course load and then for like a semester or whatever and then it's divided up into a and B days so you would have you, you would only have like half of your full load of classes on any given day so you'd have that whole day off from it to focus on the other classes and that day to do your homework as well so um yeah i would skip like b days almost religiously a days were they were they're comfortable they were a safe space because they were easy classes usually it just always worked out like that for me and my b day classes would be like chemistry and stuff and things that I with effort I could have understood a lot better but I just like I was like I'm just gonna <laughs> like not go so I missed like 30 days like let's see here yeah like senior year I missed like 30 days of like the the b-day classes and um, it was just really it was really awkward for the day where I finally would um, show up you know because yeah, I uh, was like, I was an absentee student or whatever. So anyways, that's getting off on a tangent. Let's get back to the mess. Airsoft gun over there. Airsoft was a key pastime for me and my friends. Um, that was, as you, see, as you can see from the orange tip, um, that was my M4. And I will try to B-roll some footage of, of me holding my um, airsoft rifle um, somewhere else in here. Uh, I loved the flex of my airsoft. That was some of the best times I ever had growing up, our airsoft battles. Um, so, yeah, just random garbage on the floor here. The use. Uh, what I really cared about was when I'm pulled up to the desk, I could have the, my feet on top of my base, you know, because, you know, usually this 
PC speaker system setups you would buy would come as like 2.1, as in two speakers and then one subwoofer. In my case, I think I had like a five or a 7.1, something ridiculous like that. Um, at one point I just gave up on like, you know, the other speakers and just had, the, I, I used two out of the seven speakers I had because the other ones really just felt like they were lost on me. Um, so yeah, footrest there. So I, I didn't really care, you know, about all this stuff on the ground because what's important is, you know, I had, you know, a footrest here. Or if they weren't on sitting on top of the subwoofer, they were like pressed up against the wall. So yeah, my dirty feet were like, <laughs> you know, smudging the wall. Good thing it was already like this green, yellow, you know, hodgepodge mosaic wallpaper color. Um, as you can see right here, it looks like a flyer. And that's because for, um, for like, I think it was junior year, early, early senior year or junior year, me and my friends uh, using my money from um, working primarily and a few other contributions here and there, uh, but I was, I was mainly the financier. We held our own LAN party uh, at a local college, Mercyhurst at University, I think. And I made, I, this is like my first Photoshop creation ever. I like this little thing right here in the center it's like it, it's the bfg like 3000 or something from doom and i took that image from the internet and then i i used photoshop to create like some smoke coming out of it and we called it the last stand land the last stand land yeah and then like who what where when whatever <laughs> how much it costs and people showed up it was a great event we had a prize pool and everything we had um i think the primary games uh, which had money behind it. The biggest prize pool I remember was Quake. Yeah, it was like Quake 3 or Quake Arena or something like that. That was really, really cool. I think Counter-Strike 2, yeah. Counter-Strike 1.6. And I think Source, yeah. Those, those are the three ones, and now that I think about it. Quake 1.6 and Source. Source was really new back then, back in 2007. It was still kind of hot. Um, Anyways, I think we looked... Okay, yeah. Bed unmade. Like, I would... I was... <laughs> I was so lazy when it came to my bed. Um, if I had sheets on it, that was trying hard. Usually, I would just, like, have the comforter on top of the bed. And then I would lay on top of the comforter and then, like, take both sides on the left and right. Oh, yeah. Small camera. Not here. And I just like wrap myself up, like cocoon myself. So, uh, and I did it like that. I was like, why do I even need sheets? So, it was like a twin mattress, I think. Yeah, it was pretty small. But some of the best nights of sleep I ever had, especially after those long wow sessions. Um, all right, next picture. Yeah, not a whole lot between this one and this one. Um, see my lamp here yeah I usually had that on at night bookshelf in the background didn't mention that yet full of books I never read you know I had so many books as a kid and uh, my interest in reading stopped probably about eighth grade I was a big reader like up until eighth grade like I stayed on top of the Harry Potter releases I enjoyed the shit out of those I would um, do the book uh, book of the month club or whatever with Pizza Hut so I get the free pan pizza after I turn that into my local school uh, reading program so yeah that kind of dried up once I started getting into gaming really big this is probably one of the better resolution photos right here and I think I took these pictures with like one of those Kodak easy share cameras like the higher end point and shoot ones that were available back in the day this is before like smartphones were really ubiquitous um the ipod was definitely well known but i think the iphone was um not quite there yet or if it was it didn't have the best camera quality so yeah that's what i'm guessing you know i used to take these pictures so yeah herbie's right there um, even to the even back then, like I wasn't always a fan when, I, when at least when I was using my own money, 
of getting the meals at fast food places because I just felt like the price jumped like 60-70% as soon as you added on that drink. I was always like this, I always favored like using a la carte style ordering because I felt like you'd get more for your money that way and I could just buy like a can of soda if I really wanted it or you know just drink something that we already have at home uh, for a lot lot less. So yeah, uh, <laughs> catch. Oh yeah, because I couldn't be I couldn't be bothered to put this shit back. So I, you know, lukewarm ketchup is just as good as cold ketchup. I know some people, it's kind of split. You know, half the I, I'd say about half of people, you know, they keep their ketchup warm. Half of them keep it in the fridge. To me, it tasted the same. It's probably worse for your bacteria and health overall to have a nice warm environment for bacteria to grow in but I didn't care, I'd just take that, drizzle it probably on top of the fries that are still in the holder. Sometimes I would put it on a plate or whatever, like, like this kind of plate and dip the fries in that way, but yeah. Um, let's see here. Can't really make out, I think, this, I think this is a KFC bag right here. I'm pretty sure that is. More nuggets, it looks like I was a big nugget boy back then. Um, yeah, Tropicana Lemonade, that was the can I was pointing to earlier over here. Um, random Frank Sinatra CD right here. Windows Media Player, It back in the day that was a big feature, at least for me. Taking music CDs that I had around the house, putting it in the CD tray um, in my PC, going to Windows Media Player, and then you, there was this feature called like Rip CD or whatever where you could turn the CD into mp3 files and I was like well I just for posterity I want to get all of the CDs I can I don't care what it is whether I listen to it or not I want to get it into mp3 format to start my own little music library so that's how I did it and then I ended up you know not keeping a lot of those anyways because it was like converted to this WMA format which is like a little bit laggier in its playback than mp3 so yeah I ended up being a waste of time um, Doom 3 for PC there. Uh, I still remember that. That was a, that was a great game. Um, one of my first, like... Well, no, it wasn't my first, but it was one of the few FPSs I played all the way through. Um, the other one was being Half-Life and um, all of its expansions. And then Half-Life 2 and its expansions. It looks like a blank CD there. Um, would burn stuff for my friends from time to time because it was actually pretty rare for people to have uh, DVD and DVD RW drives and CD RW drives. That looks like the Steelbook case for Final Fantasy XII. Um, that was one of those PS2 games that I would start and then not really finish and I actually just beat the game in its entirety, like completionist mode, beat it. Not the uh, Zodiac whatever edition for ps4 the remake but the original ps2 version like the same copy right here i beat that just like a month ago and it felt so good to finally get that off my bucket list um looks like one of those uh right here is this kind of like soft book you know like cd binders where you can hold like a gajillion cds in there back when people still had a reason to keep cds around um Power strip, I was only using like two or three slots, I think, for my lamp, my monitor, and my desktop. Floor that could have used a vacuum probably like 10 months prior to the photo. <laughs> um, there's the butt stock for my airsoft rifle right there. This was a little pocket game from Radio Shack where you put the batteries in. It takes like a D cell battery or some like one of those weird little rectangular batteries, and then you would start it up and it'd be like a Simon Says thing and it would go for like infinite rounds. I usually would get for like round like 20 or 30 or something like that. Um, let's see here. Little League Baseball or Soccer Youth Soccer League trophy right there. Rabbit Bookend for the bookshelf. Um, probably some random puzzle or something. Yeah, just books. Oh, oh my god, oh my god. 
Oh man, this brings back memories. I was so mad when my family just miraculous, like when this just turned up missing. This was a special edition, um, collect, like collector's edition glass that McDonald's would give you um, around the time of Batman Returns or Batman Returns or Batman Forever. They released these uh, special, like uh, it was like a Coca-Cola sponsorship thing where you order like a Coke and you, you know, with your meal and they would give you this collectible like Batman glass. And it, was, it felt so cool to drink out of it, seeing the ice and the fizzly Coke. And it wouldn't go into the handle. Um, it was welded separately from the glass, but just it was like the coolest like design on it. More random glasses filled up, but it's now stale. Even at the time of the photo, it was probably stagnant and nasty ass flat soda in there. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay, nice. Another zoom. Man, would I kill to be able to actually read what is on these? What is on this paper? God knows. Even back then, I wasn't really a fan of eating the crust. To me, the best part of the pizza was the pizza itself. Once you get up to the crust, it's like, okay, now I ran out of sauce and cheese and it's just cardboard. There's no redeeming value left on this little Caesar's pizza. Oh, I love these. It's, it's, it felt kinda, it made me feel fancy. It felt like I was eating like something close to a gourmet meal, like a real home cooked meal, but it was just either chicken noodle soup or tomato soup in that little, you know, holdable cup format. Put this in the microwave for two minutes and you're, you're gonna eat good. This is also a good mug. You know, it was like a cat, like tangling itself into a real bookcase. Uh, so was this one. This one held a shit ton of hot cocoa. <laughs> Those are really good for the winter months. Uh, mouse pad I didn't use. As you can see, this video professor thing. This is for like Microsoft Publisher, something I would never use. I don't think a whole lot of people use it. It's like, it's like Microsoft Office's attempt at a flyer creation tool when people could just use Photoshop. Um, so that looks like the original World of Warcraft box, because um, I got into I got into WoW like months before Burning Crusade. Um, so yeah, those were still freshly stacked. Yeah, you know, like as you can see, not a whole lot of time went by in the form of these two boxes on top of my WoW box when Burning Crusade came out. Um, uh, better close up my keyboard here. Let me just zoom back. As you can see, it had like you know, different toggle ball um, LED modes. Um, light up keys were revolutionary back then. That's what that's one of the things I loved about it the most. I could have like whole dark, my whole room like really dark, and I'd be able to, for some reason, like having the keys lit up helped me with keystroke accuracy. Somehow I can't explain it, but. You know, even though I'm not, I don't look at the keys when I, I play or type or do anything, but it's just somehow it, it's like my peripheral vision just comes into play and this helps it. Uh, Rice Krispie Treats, favorite snack. Even, like, I, I still love them. They're terrible for your teeth. Like, you better brush your teeth ASAP after you eat one of those. But, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, bottle cap right there. And yeah, that does it. I, I do have more pictures here. Let me find them real quick. There are, uh, I know there are more pictures of other messes on this very desk. Okay, here's me flexing with my Airsoft M4 rifle had the <laughs> the foregrip <laughs> that had uh, you would just slide it on, and then screw it into place with a little knobby right here. This was not actually a scope. This was not an ACOG advanced optic. No 2.5 zoom or whatever. This was just 
it was a faux optic, which also served as the gravity feed hopper to feed the pellets into the actual rifle. Uh, that magazine slot, funny enough, was actually used for the batteries. You can see a battery pack in there that was rechargeable, and that's what operate. That's what powered the motor. Um, this uh, buttstock was actually really nice. It was slide adjustable, just like the real thing. And uh, the front sight, you know, not really that useful because this is in the way here. So, uh, you know, usually in airsoft, you're moving a lot, you know, anyways. So it shoots straight, you know, straight enough. So you just kind of shoot from the hip or you just kind of dead reckon like where you're aiming, if you're aiming from the shoulder. This was taken to my friend's Honda CRV. He was one of my few friends who was driving at like age 16 onwards and uh yeah good times i think this is like right before we had an airsoft match or something yep here's me flexing sig sour p228 because it is a sig sour replica um <laughs> look at that look at that face i thought i was a little badass dude back then um this was all mechanical. The airsoft rounds were fed into the grip and it would actually, the slide would work. That's how you would like, I think that's how you would like load it on first load. But yeah, that was good. Yeah, you, okay, I remember now. Yeah, it's bolt, it was like a bolt action pistol. Like you had to like cock it back, shoot, cock it back, shoot. So. Made for some interesting, you know, like running gun techniques because you wouldn't have a double hand grip. You'd have one hand permanently like on top of the um, SIG and then you just like. Yeah. Okay, I finally found it. Here is the other picture I wanted to show you guys. This was actually my desk on one of it, its better days. So yeah, as you can see the same um, computer software boxes and the wow boxes were neatly stacked. Lamp was where it should have been. Best spot to provide light to my whole room. Um, bunch of blank CDs cause that's what you had around when you were burning stuff for other people. And yeah, the elephant in the room, all these balls, bottles. So, <laughs> you know how, like, homosexual it sounded to tell people, hey, I'm gonna go home and crack open a nice cold, you know, beverage. You're like, what, what, what beverage? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be drinking some balls. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was part of their ingenious marketing scheme. Let's call it the drink balls. And yeah, B A W L S. So this drink was really popular in the airsoft community, and as you saw from the photos, uh, that's something I was a part of. That's how it got introduced to me. My friend who got me into airsoft took me to, um, you know, we're just going to go to the airsoft store to buy some pellets and stuff, you know, extra ammo for an upcoming match. And you know, while he was there, when I went with him one day, he bought a huge like like 48 pack or whatever of like these balls of drinks and like a giant cardboard container. And I was like just staring in amazement because I've never seen a beverage come into like, you know, a, I've never seen a beverage come into like a glass bottle like this before besides like, you know, old fashioned Coca-Cola drinks. And even furthermore, it had these little like braille dots on the side of it for like that extra, you know, unique grip that really, I guess, subconsciously left an impression on you. Just the, it's a beautiful like design. Like, and I, I've never seen anyone else do it today, even to this day, probably because it's expensive and has a high chance of breaking, you know, during transport being that rigid glass. Um, but anyways, it was a Guarana drink if you zoom up really closely on one of these bottles, um, it says Guarana right underneath balls, and eh, it's such a unique flavor. It tastes, it tasted like um, kind of cream soda-ish. If you ever had cream soda um, before, 
It was a very smooth flavor and my god, did it hit you with some caffeine, man. I think Guarana to this day is used in a lot of popular energy drinks. Monster, Red Bull, Rockstar, etc. Um, but this was like straight up Guarana with a little bit of extra flavoring. And I would go through these bottles quick. You're only really supposed to have like one like per day if you want to be healthy about it. But I would just smash them. And you know, it was, they were good warm or cold. That was what was dangerous about them. So yeah, this was when money was really good for me and I was obviously living rent free in my, you know, um, in my room, still being in high school and working part time after school. So yeah, I was able to buy my own balls in time. And yeah, this was what my desk would look like, probably in the span of like a weekend. This is like, <laughs> step my game up. This is like the gamer's version of Crystal. You know, people, you know, in like the club culture, they're considered high class and they're buying bottles <laughs> you know, for their table or whatever. This is like the gamer version of that back in 2007. Anyways, that was it. That's my epic mess. That's my lair from back in the day when Burning Crusade was alive and well. And I think subscribers were on a very steady, very healthy upward trend. Anyways, <laughs> thank you for watching, guys. Um, please um, share your thoughts or perhaps even upload or find some way to share your own mess. I know I had a lot of fun doing this and I'm glad that it can live on through YouTube um, in the terrible event that I someday lose my hard drive or something, God you know, forbid. Anyways, thank you all. See you around. Peace. Oh, yeah.